everyone. In this session, we'll be seeing the relationship between zeros of a polynomial and coefficients of a polynomial. Let's quickly recap what all we learned in the previous session. We know what is zero of a polynomial, how to find zero of a polynomial by equating it with zero and then factorizing it. Then we saw the relation between zeros and coefficients of a linear polynomial that is minus b upon a. So here I have just listed down the zeros of the polynomial of each of the types linear, quadratic and cubic. So as we know the general form for a linear polynomial is ax plus b. In the same way the general form for a quadratic polynomial is ax square plus bx plus c and for cubic it is ax cube plus bx square plus cx plus d. So as we've seen the relationship for linear polynomial as minus b upon a, let's now move on to quadratic and cubic polynomials. Now since quadratic and cubic polynomials have more than one zeros, what will happen if we add the zeros or if we multiply the zeros? Let's see if we can still establish a similar relationship. So let's take the sum of the zeros and the product of the zeros. The zeros are minus 4 and 2 so the sum would be minus 4 plus 2 which is equal to minus 2 and minus 2 is also written as minus 2 upon 1. Now 2 is nothing but the coefficient of x and 1 is nothing but coefficient of x square. So when you compare this b is 2 and a would be 1. So this would be equal to minus of b upon a. Same way the sum of the zeros for cubic polynomial would be 3 plus root 2 plus minus root 2 that is equal to 3 and 3 can also be written as minus of minus 3 upon 1 right. In that case minus 3 is coefficient of x square and 1 is coefficient of x cubed. So when we compare this, this would be minus of b upon a. So basically the sum of the zeros in both quadratic and cubic are a ratio of coefficients of the second term to first term. Okay, let's find the product of zeros, minus 4 multiplied by 2. And here it would be 3 into root 2 into minus root 2. So now if you see the product of zeros for quadratic and cubic is the ratio of coefficients of last term to first term. But in case of cubic polynomial we have three zeros. So there is one more relationship and that is the sum of the product of zeros. This relationship is established when we multiply the zeros in different combinations that means two at a time and then we add them up. That comes to be equal to minus 2 which is nothing but minus 2 upon 1 when compared to standard form it is c upon a. Now with the help of these relations or simple formula that we've established, we can solve different types of problems based on zeros of a polynomial. Suppose we were asked to find a quadratic polynomial and we had to find the zeros of the polynomial. And if we were given the sum of the zeros to be 8 and the product to be 12. In that case, we don't know what the polynomial is, so we would be calling our polynomial ax square plus bx plus c. This is the general form for any quadratic polynomial. Now we know what is the sum of the zeros. It is 8. And we also know that sum of zeros for any quadratic polynomial is minus p upon a when compared to standard form. So I can say that 8 is equal to minus p upon a. But here we don't know what is a and what is b. We should at least know what is our denominator. We can take any value for a, but to get the simplest form for the polynomial, we have to assume a equal to 1. 
so then eight would be equal to minus b upon one and b would be equal to minus eight we are also given the product of the zeros as 12 and product of zeros for any quadratic polynomial is c upon a so therefore 12 is equal to c upon a again if a is equal to 1 then we can say that c is equal to 12 so we can say that when a is equal to 1 we have got b equal to minus 8 and c equal to 12 so our polynomial would be a equal to 1 b equal to minus 8 and c equal to 12 so it would be 1x square minus 8x plus 12 so this is our polynomial that we've got but what if I had taken a to be any other number say I had taken a to be equal to 5 in that case I would have got b equal to 5 into minus 8 that would have been 40 minus 40 and c would have been 12 into 5 that is 60 so then our polynomial would have been 5x square minus 40x plus 60 instead of 1x square minus 8x plus 12 and then if we were to go ahead and find the zeros for this we would have equated this equal to 0 then we would have got this into the simpler terms by taking out 5 common which is x square minus 8x plus 12 equal to 0 upon 5 that is nothing but x square minus 8x plus 12 the same as when we consider a equal to 1 so to get the simplest form for our polynomial we take a as 1 to find the zeros for this polynomial we will equate it with 0 and factorize it so we get x square minus 6x minus 2x plus 12 x x minus 6 minus 2 common x minus 6 then we'll go ahead and factorize this so we have got 6 and 2 as the zeros of the polynomial x square minus 8x plus 12 so if we are given the sum of the zeros and the product of the zeros and we are asked to find the polynomial and the zeros of the polynomial this is how we solve it so that's it let's have a quick recap 